Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today is gonna be a pretty simple video. I'm having an issue, it's a minor issue, but it's very annoying. It's an issue where the doors are closed, but the car does not think so. The door jar light is on, it flashes. I can't manually lock the car. The interior lights go on and off. The door jar light is on constantly. I will show you. The uh, door jar light is on constantly. The locks just want to cycle themselves. It won't. It won't stay. I can't manually lock it. Okay, all is quiet. Let me try and lock it. Just unlocks. It's gone crazy. So we'll go for a little drive. Um, what I'm now, I've already fixed the car. I put it back to original factory equipment just so that I can show you all the problems. And there's quite a few of them. One is the doors are closed, your door jar light is on, or your door jar light is flashing. The locks won't stay locked, or they're constantly cycling. The dome lights or the in the interior lights are on. And they won't go off or they flash there's gonna be other issues too like driving over bumps back and I'm gonna back out of my driveway at an angle the car is gonna twist everything should um, make noise but if you can hear it <laughs> the door locks are trying to cycle constantly I will go out of my driveway at an angle like I normally do so I don't bottom out on anything and the car will twist and everything should go crazy. But everything's everything's already going crazy. Okay. I hope my garage door closed. There we go. This car is making all kinds of noises. This is not good. I'm gonna drive around, go over some bumps. You should be able to see these lights go on and off. One of the other issues you'll have is your alarm will just randomly start going off. With the car parked in a driveway, your alarm will just start to go off. A little FYI, I love to drive with one hand on top of the steering wheel and I am desperately trying to stop doing that. And the reason is, is it's because of this car, it's because of the uh, C4 Corvette and the tilt steering wheel. My tilt steering wheel in every location is rock solid, but that's not the case in a lot of them. It's a pain in the butt to do that yourself. It requires some special tools. And it's just not cheap. I think it's around seven or $800 minimum to bring it into a shop. And to do it yourself, it requires special tools. And uh, you know, I'm just not going there. I don't even know how much the parts are if you were to do it yourself but it requires replacing the whole knuckle in there. So I'm trying to drive with my hands on each side of the steering wheel. The first place people are gonna wanna go is the door jar switch. 
and I would advise to not go there first at least not with the mentality that the door jar at least don't go there with the mentality that the door jar switch is bad and needs to be replaced the uh, door locks are going nuts all right let's get this in the garage and I will show you what I'm gonna do all right so here's the plunger there's two bolts whatever you do do not remove those two bolts this plunger does come out of the car from this direction the problem is these bolts don't screw into the door frame the bolts screw into a retainer that's loose so the minute you take these two bolts out the retainer is gonna fall down on the wiring you have to remove the door panel to take this switch out so what I was talking about cleaning the grime off it that's this plunger it goes in and out there's gonna be a buildup of grime around here and it causes the plunger to stick so it doesn't when its door is closed and depressed it doesn't release fast I cleaned it like I told you I used contact cleaner sprayed it all up in there and wiped it off with a paper towel and then I sprayed a dry lubricant on there I did that to both sides now the next thing here is the problem okay guys right here was the problem what these are is just a push-in retainer just a plastic push-in retainer so very carefully not to damage the paint pull it out see it's just a uh, it's just one of those retainers with the ribs if you'll notice where the plunger pushes in on it it's paper thin I bought two components and it was pretty cheap I do not have a lot of money into this repair I bought some rubber washers and the rubber washer alone would probably do it the rubber washer behind the retainer but I went a step further I bought some new push-in retainers these are these are Dorman 963058 and let's push this in there we go okay here's the other side I'll go in with very careful <laughs> very carefully with my door panel remover I put on a washer and my new retainer and I push it in that's that okay guys so back in the car no door jar light on no interior lights on the door locks do whatever I tell them to a real good test will be backing out of the driveway all right here we go let's see what happens nothing happened the locks didn't cycle the lights never came on the door jar light on the dash never came on nah, nothing no interior lights no door locks no door jar switch if I want to lock it my guess is it'll stay locked now I'll, I'll lock it for this whole test drive door is still locked I haven't had any issues at all with the door jar switch my problem was not a faulty door jar switch it was probably a combination of a dirty door jar switch and a wore out plastic push-in retainer we're coming up on some railroad tracks that'll be a really good test the doors are still locked I locked them at the beginning of the drive 
They haven't cycled, nothing, no noise. So we'll go over the railroad tracks. We'll see if the lock cycle, the interior lights flash, door jar switch. We'll see what, if anything, happens. All right, here come the railroad tracks. Let's see what happens. I won't slow down. I'll hit all the bumps. Nothing, guys, nothing. The door locks didn't cycle. Here, I'll unlock them. The lights never came on. Problem solved, guys. I am fairly confident that I fixed the problem.